If you are watching this video, you have probably already written classes in Python before and still the class initializer is not 100% clear to you. And it does not help that there is a lot of technical blah blah like parameters, arguments, attributes and so on. In this video you learn the terminology of class initializers so it's much easier for you to search online for things, the procedure of object instantiation, and how the class initializer makes sure that objects have all the required data and are ready to be used. Let me show you what would happen if there were no class initializers. Here is class employee and two employee objects are instantiated. What if I want to print the name of employee 1? Well, it would be a miracle if that would have worked. But in order to find out the problem, I had to execute the program. Let's fix this particular problem. Now it works. But the problem is not really solved. There is the error again. Of course, I can fix it by setting the name of employee 2. But what if more attributes are used? You would just have to hope that these attributes are set somewhere. And only at runtime you will see if everything works. How do you solve this particular problem? You use a class initializer to make sure all attributes are set before using the object. Let me type the class initializer for the employee class. Look at the variables n, s and b. One letter variables are really bad practice. But I chose them on purpose and I'll show you why in a minute. First, let's see what happens if I run the code. Python gives an error. Three required positional arguments are missing. Notice that the problem was spotted before even executing the program. I'll provide the name, salary and bonus for each employee. There is no need now anymore to set attributes after instantiating the objects. What happens when I run the code? Very nice. Employee objects are guaranteed to have all the information they need to operate correctly. Look at the bonus of the employees. It seems like it is 10% of the salary. If this is some kind of business logic, there is no need to calculate it manually. You see that the initializer can also be used to calculate the value of attributes. Bonus does not have to be passed anymore. You can even set it to a fixed value. Now all employees have a fixed bonus of $100. You saw how the class initializer forced certain information to be passed. By doing this, Python can check for missing information at compile time, which helps preventing errors from happening at runtime. Now it's time to explain the process of instantiating the objects and get the terminology right. When an employee object is instantiated, Two arguments are passed, Vera and 2000. N and S are the class initializer parameters. The parameters are set to the values of arguments Vera and 2000. N now has value Vera and S has value 2000. The attribute name is created in the object and gets the value of parameter N. Self.name now has value Vera. 
attribute salary is created and gets the value from parameter s. Attribute bonus is created and gets the value of 100. By the way, when I would create this class in a real project, I would rename n and s to name and salary. It would look like this. The reason I chose n and s for this tutorial is to indicate that this name is not the same as this name. Here name is a parameter and here name is an attribute that gets the value of the parameter. Regardless of the names I used, the object initialization is finished and the object is guaranteed to have all the information it needs to work properly. One of the common mistakes beginners make is forgetting to write the self parameter in the class initializer. If you wonder why and how self works, I created several videos on that topic. Well, that's all for this video. For more information about the mysterious self in methods, click one of my other videos on the topic. Thanks for watching.